And we compare here area spacing of two families, one offshore and then onshore. In the offshore array spacing, we see two substations. They are, they are um, uh, symbolically identified as two, brown, two um, blue circles. Two substations somewhere in the middle of the array. Onshore is different. Onshore, we have an array boundary and the substation beyond that boundary. Usually, onshore wind farms are smaller in size in terms of the area, in terms of the land, than offshore. We will discuss about it later on. So, the boundary is the line that limit that particular farm and the substation is just outside the boundary and it goes out to the grid. In offshore is not the case. The case in offshore is because we have so many turbines spread around in so large area, we need to place substations in between and they stepped up the voltages and send the output power long distance to the grid. And now let's look at layout considerations of a wind farm. And we see two different configurations. On the left hand side, we see a matrix of turbines, 11 turbines in each row and 12 rows, and they are 10 kilometers away from the substation. And basically, there are two independent farms within one big wind farm. The boundary of that particular uh, wind farm is very well set. The boundary is the, the, sea, the shoreline. And the medium voltage conversion stepped up transformer to high voltage is on shore. On the right hand side, we see another configuration of a wind farm, which again is offshore and onshore, no matter the, and can be the same. And the distance between each turbine, each neighboring turbine and neighboring row should be at least, at least five times the diameter of the rotor itself. When we go from row to row and three diameters when we go to turbine to turbine. We've talked before about something that calls wake effect, the wake turbulence, and the, the, the differentiation, the, the reduction in wind speed, the wind coming from the front, compared to the wind that goes beyond after the turbine itself. And when we have a situation, when we have an arrangement of turbines, as we've seen before, which is basically like a, like a chessboard configuration, rows and columns in 90 degrees, we've seen it before, then we have what we call a wind speed decay because of the wake effect. And this graph is showing us something very, very interesting. The horizontal axis is wind turbine, the number of turbines. The vertical one is the wind speed decay. This is the percentage of the decaying of the wind speed when we increase the turbine, the number of turbines in a farm. And when we increase or decrease the distance between each turbine and another. Now let's look at um, the five different examples here. We see when the distance is five times the diameter, compared to distance of nine diameters, there will be different in the wind speed decay of the front row, front row compared to the back one, and the back one, and the back one. As we go further back in the rows, 
the wind speed is being decreased. As we increase the number of turbines, it means that we shorten the distance between them in a given area. That means wake effect is increased. That means wind speed is decayed in the back rows. That means their efficiency will go down. That means the output power will go down. So this is a very interesting relationship between number of turbines in a farm compared to the number of rows in the matrix, in the chessboard matrix of the array, and the wind speed decaying effect. And this is a comparison of the same throughput wind farm, but different placement of wind turbines in, within an array. The bottom half of this picture are rows and columns in 90 degrees just as a chessboard matrix. The top half is the same wind farm but different arrangement, what we call staggered arrangement, where each row is offsetted compared to the two neighboring rows. Comparing the two effects in terms of the wake, we easily can see that the wake effect in the staggered arrangement is better compared to the uh, chessboard configuration. The effect of the double trapezoid, upside down trapezoid, is smaller. That area is smaller compared to the rectangular on the bottom. That means the wake effect created by the two turbines in the center of the upper half on the other three which are in the back and the other two which are even further back will be less than in the bottom half. So staggered is better than chessboard. And this is another type of analysis of the wake decay based on a certain configurations of array arrangement. In this particular example, we have a 20 wind turbine array, 4x5 matrix. They space 5 diameters on x-axis and 5 diameters of the rotor in y-axis. And the wind is coming from 0 degrees. On the bottom half, we see the wind speed of the front row. The front row are the ones on the red, on the top of the picture. And then we see another five axis lower wind speed. And then it goes by groups of five. So the top five axis relates to the front row, the top five turbines. The second group of axis related to the second row. Easily we can see how the wind speed is being decreased from row to row because of wake decay slash turbulences. Efficiency in cost per kilowatt compared to number of turbines. Given, given a certain amount of land for a particular site. The graph on the top is on the horizontal axis is the number of turbines in a farm and the vertical one is the farm efficiency. And in a given land, the more turbines we, in, we include in the uh, farm, the efficiency of the farm altogether goes down. It's basically, in this particular example, if we um, install 18 turbines in that farm, the efficiency will, go, will be 0.92. So it's a loss of 8%. Increasing turbines, losing efficiency. So there should be kind of a, a trade-off between how much money to spend, how many turbines to uh, install, compared to how, many, how, how much efficiency I will have, slash output, slash dollar, dollars 
of electricity being sold to the electric company. The graph on the bottom, same land area, number of turbines in a farm, cost per kilowatt. So not only that we, are, that we are increasing the number of turbines, because of the loss of efficiency, the cost per kilowatt is go high, go high. So we produce more electricity, but per each kilowatt cost us more. So again, there's a trade-off in this in computation of the, of the um, cost benefit of adding and adding more turbines in a given area. Not necessarily adding more turbines means more output production. As we see it, efficiency goes down and cost per, cost per kilowatt goes up. And in this particular graph, very easily we can see that no matter how many, what is the farm size, how large will be the farm in terms of area, compare the efficiency. So we can have a very, very large farm with long distances between the turbines. If it will be above eight or eight and a half in terms of size, still the efficiency will be fixed, standing on 100%, 1.0. So if we increase the farm size, let's say from one to four and to four from seven, and, in, and install X number of turbines there, meaning so much distance between each turbine and its neighbor, then we can control the efficiency. But the wake effect is reduced to some negligible values if we increase the farm further and further and make it a huge farm with long distances between the turbines, we still get to a point when the efficiency will not be improved. It will be at its maximum. So, in the graphs before that we've seen previously, we don't want to narrow and shorten and small, make the areas too small. We will lose efficiency. And we don't want to make the area too large in order to gain efficiency because anyway, around eight, we will get the maximum efficiency. So there's a minimum size and maximum size per wind farm for a given amount of projected output. And this is just an example of an analysis of an arrangement of uh, turbines on the graph on the left that we see three rows, three turbines in each row, and they are in chessboard matrix, that's on the left. The wind speed is in the, is in the center, and we can see that the three front row see 7.1 meter per second wind speed. The second group, which is in row number two, they get only 6.75. The third group, row number three, sees only around 6.5 6 meter per second. So what they see because of the turbulence, because of the wake, their effective wind speed is going down and down as we go further back in the rows. And the power available, the graph on the right, is also goes down. The lower the wind speed, the lower the power generation. So having a chase board matrix, if the distance between one row and the back row and the third row, if the distance between them is not long enough, it will affect the effective wind speed, obviously affect the effective output power. And there are different arrangements, and these are just an example of area array layouts. Number one, we see the familiar chessboard. The one on the top right is a random, staggered, array layout and very easily we can simulate wake effect in every single type of layout. For example, 
the one on the bottom right. The one on the bottom right, we have three turbines in the front row. We have next to it turbine number four. It's not in the same level, but it's close to it. And then further away back, we have number five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's basically like two groups of turbines, the front group and the back group. And there's a big distance between them on the X axis. That means the front group, one, two, three, four turbines, generate wakes, generate turbulences, but they are being decayed and being eliminated. So the, the, the right group, the back ones, will basically see the front wind speed.